When Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, Russian President Vladimir Putin promised he would capture its capital, Kyiv, in three days. Eighteen months later, that still hasn't happened, despite the Kremlin spending over $60 billion on the war effort, said Gary Schmidt of the American Enterprise Institute, a Washington-based think tank. Everybody was looking at basically the amount of money that the that the Politburo, I mean, that the Kremlin was throwing at the Russian military and saying, well, that they're going to have real capabilities. Atlantic Council strategy and security expert Ian Brzezinski believes the invasion of Ukraine was designed as a short-term campaign that has now dragged into a defensive brawl. A year and a half ago, they were on the offense. Uh, and an offensive operation is always a lot more difficult than a defensive operation. Now they're on the defense. Uh, we've been, they've been given, unfortunately, a lot of time to dig in and establish fortifications and minefields um, and, you know, trench lines and such. It's not a world-class fighting force, but it's still a significant force. Today, the Russian army amounts to about one million soldiers. Schmidt says that because of its losses in Ukraine and despite its mobilization, large parts of the army are not ready for combat. They were once a juggernaut when it came to uh, armored uh, uh, operations. And it turns out that, again, without combined operations capabilities, uh, without the logistics necessary to carry that out, um, and without the sort of combined use of air power, um, that juggernaut just doesn't exist. Brzezinski says the August 2008 conflict in Georgia exposed weaknesses in discipline, command and structure within the Russian military. But it was, you know, a dismal performance. And Putin vowed that he was going to change things. And he embarked upon a 10 to 15 year military modernization plan. Moscow started to transition its forces into a modernized, more compact, contracted army, adopting Western-style battalion tactical groups. But Schmidt says it also compromised, prioritizing unit quantity over quality, and military leadership exaggerated capabilities to please political leaders. The reforms, he says, haven't been that effective. And it turned out there was just an immense amount of uh, corruption that that left the this you know that so most of the money was getting drained away from actually improving the military to 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 the pockets of generals and, and uh, contractors. Today, Russia faces a manpower problem in Ukraine, and bolstering troop numbers alone won't help and won't be easy, says Philip Bridlov, a retired U.S. Air Force general who was NATO's top commander from 2013 to 2016. If you think Russia is completely done, I think you're wrong. There is a lot more capability. But it would take a huge political lift for Putin to continue to call up forces and do some of the things that he might have to do. The experts VOA spoke with say they are waiting to see how Wagner fighters respond to the death of their rebellious chief, Evgeny Prigozhin, in a plane crash believed to have been orchestrated by Putin. For Anya Chikvadze, NRA's VOA News.